we don't often assume an upside down attitude on tomorrow's world, but I happen to be in one of the few places on Earth where there's no other attitude to assume. I'm in the Apollo Space Capsule at a space research center in California. And it's from California that tonight's program comes. John Parry. When the first American astronauts land on the moon, and they're scheduled to at the end of next year, they'll travel in a spaceship exactly like this. There's not much room in here, and these couches are very uncomfortable. But it doesn't matter very much, because when you're in space, your body doesn't weigh anything at all. You're completely weightless, and there's no weight pressing down on the couch. The spaceman who'll be inside here may have to spend as much as 14 days locked up. And for the whole of that time, they'll take it in turns to do eight-hour shifts at this control panel, looking at the dials and the instruments and controlling the switches. But before they can make any decision at all about the switches, they have to consult with this computer here, which has been programmed with every possible bit of information they're likely to need on a journey like this. And there's always the view out of this window above me up here. The astronauts will see through it, and I can see through it now. The Earth gradually going backwards behind me as the spaceship gets further and further out into space. In fact, short of actually making this journey into space, this is as near to the real experience as anyone on Earth will ever have. We have the wrong FDA. I selected one that just like the FDA. Everything that happens in the capsule during a simulated flight is watched over in this main control room and another one at the Space Administration headquarters in Houston, Texas, 1,500 miles away. It's all recorded for study afterwards by both control room staffs as well as astronauts who are trying out the equipment. Short of reproducing the actual physical and psychological stresses of space flight, they've tried to bring realism to everything else here. Views of the Earth from this globe six feet in diameter taken through a special television camera. It has a series of prisms built into its optical system and servo motors to rotate them. Every minute movement of the spacecraft is reflected here, and as the prisms turn and roll, the astronaut gets a vivid impression of the Earth hundreds of miles below him. Spain and the North African coastline. It took six artists six months to paint on all the detail by hand, working mostly from satellite photographs. Some of the areas on this map are accurate to half a mile. The astronaut sees it through the picture window above him, over the Red Sea and the Sinai Peninsula. This is exactly what you see if you pass at orbital speed over the Middle East. The ground is coloured with vegetation for the month of August. Another television camera produces realistic pictures of the stars in the sky. They roll gently past Apollo's window as the craft spins in deep space. 1,353 of the most important ones, all the correct size in relation to each other, and all simulated on a two-foot diameter sphere which has reflectors embedded in its surface. During a simulated flight, control staff are as busy as the astronauts, checking the mass of computerized information, watching a bank of closed-circuit television monitors, and keeping in constant touch with their counterparts in Texas. Though all navigational controls are completely operational, the crew has to cross-check every decision with the onboard computer before altering course. Before the end of next year, men could be flying across the moon's surface and preparing to land. In this moon simulation laboratory, the camera travels across a moonscape, which is an artist's impression of what it looks like up there. The whole of the gantry is controlled from a room next door, a room which contains a machine which, up to now, has been secret. The picture from the camera on the gantry is fed into this television projector. Below, in front of a 20-foot wide screen, is a model of a lunar scooter, the kind of personal jet transport astronauts might use when they get on the moon's surface. Underfoot, delicate sensors which transmit every movement of the astronaut's body to the control system. The right hand controls movement in three directions, roll, pitch and yaw. The instrument panel is as complicated as a light aircraft and gives the same sort of information. Power from the jets is controlled by the left hand. Both the camera and the gantry, connected to the vehicle's delicate controls, respond precisely to everything that happens on the lunar scooter. Even if the astronaut shifts his weight only slightly, it will show up here. In the vehicle, the effect is so realistic that trained astronauts have been known to feel dizzy and fall over when the picture has made them think they were out of control. Perfect balance and good coordination are vital. 
if you want to survive your first scooter ride on the surface of the moon.